Hey toy fans, Aaron here. Today, it's going to take a look at the Vandor 1 playset from the Solo movie. Now, one thing I wasn't really able to get across in the video you're about to see is just how large this is. So, here you get a, you know, reference of size by it being next to me. It stands 17 inches tall. Actually, like maybe a 16th of an inch shorter than that. Uh, the width from here to here is, is 19 inches. And then also the depth of the playset is 17 inches at that point. If you turn it at its side, you'll lose about an inch or so from that depth, but then at a diagonal angle, about 23 inches wide. So it's sizable. It does stay together quite well. So if you move it around, as you see, I can hold it by one hand. And as long as I don't bump it into this shelf, even this little sliding gate stays in place and it just slots in with a peg. So anyways, Let's head to the table and check this out. And here's a look at the packaging for this Vandor playset. It comes in the solo packaging, which in this case, really what you're going to notice on that is the yellow Star Wars logo in the top left corner of the box. You got a pretty nice product image front and center with a mix of a fantasy situation of the snowy mountains in the background and nest swoop bike kind of, you know, zooming along the corner edge there. But for the most part, you are getting a pretty good idea of what you're getting in the packaging. And then along the right side, you got the Vandor one name of this set and a call out mentioning that you got two sides to play with. And through the window, you see the included Vandor Chewbacca. In this case, it's it's just that he comes with goggles and you see the accessory his uh, blaster that he comes with and you can see at the bottom that you got the only at target sticker since this is a target exclusive and one thing to note about this packaging if you're someone who's looking to keep this in the packaging and keep the box pristine you might have a hard time finding one in good shape this box has a little bit of weight to it not overly heavy and the middle section of this packaging where people are on this you know when they pack the shelves are going to pick it up at it just caves right in so I'll, this one i'm going to be opening so i'm not worried whoops <laughs> so like i said this one i'm going to be opening i'm not worried about what i'm doing here but as you can see it crunches in very easily so lots of creases are going to happen along this top side on the left side of the packaging you got basically the advertisement that it's force link 2 compatible showing that wrist gauntlet interacting with the train on the right side of the packaging you just got a brief write-up about vandor what's happening on the world and stuff and on the back side of the packaging is all of your callouts of the toy itself. So no fantasy situations here. But you see the little kid here playing with the playset. He's quite happy to be doing so. And around that playset, you got various features being called out. The sliding gate, foot pegs for figures to stand at, the convex track. And on the left side of the packaging, it just shows you the various things that need to be assembled to create this playset. And real quick, just a glance at how this looks within the packaging. One side, you got all your little plastic bits here just held in place with the cardboard. Of course, you see your figure. And then on this other side is where you have all your cardboard bits held into place. Also hidden behind Chewbacca is this little bag of stuff to help, you know, hold this all together. And just a couple quick notes before I assemble this. The cardboard for the convex train, I'd say it's just a touch thicker than what you got for the Cantina cardboard playset or the Jabba's Palace. Um, not much thicker. So that part is a little flimsier, but as you can see for the rest of the playset, uh, you know, the scene itself, it, it's much thicker. But I'd say this is almost like a, uh, like a board game thickness here of cardboard. So I'm going to get this assembled. If I run into anything that looks like it might be problems or questions as you guys assemble it, I'll pop in. But otherwise, when you see me chime back in, this should be fully assembled. And there's the course instructions to tell you how to assemble this. All right, so here it is all assembled. You got two sides to this Vandor playset, with the one being this snowy mountain area where you got the conveyor train running on the rails. And then on the flip side, it's Fort Yipso. This is where we had the meeting with Han and Kira and Lando, the card game, them acquiring the Millennium Falcon. Getting this put together was actually quite easy, just lots of little sliding of the pieces together. They interlock quite well. In all, I'd say it took me about 30 minutes to get it put together. I will say take your time getting these pieces uh, pushed out of the cardboard itself. They are all pre-cut with just, you know, little tabs holding it into place. But I think, you know, if you rush through, try to push them out too quick, you're going to run the risk of tearing the paper. I didn't have those problems, like I said, you know, but just take your time with it. Because once you damage it, it would be hard to fix. I did do a couple things on mine just to tidy up the assembly a bit. On the Fort Lipso side where you have to assemble the plastic railing and slide it down into place for the train, you do see that large opening through the side of the mountain. What I did was cut the smaller ends of that little tab piece off and slid that right back into place. You can if you want, it's not in the instructions to do so. 
And another thing I did was for this big opening here, just to give myself the option for display, is once I slid that ledge into place, I cut up just over an eighth of an inch off the bottom of this little uh, mountain side piece here. And now, now I can slide that back into place also instead of having a big opening on each side. Going in for a little bit closer look here, starting off with that mountain side. The painting to this area is looking pretty nice. You get a nice starry background up in the sky with some snow blowing around. Up top you can see a painting of the AT hauler that they were flying in to try and capture that cargo container. You do have some range troopers painted in standing on the back of the conveyor train. And otherwise just lots of mountains, lots of rails in the background there. Basically it's a scenery piece. As for the train itself, as I mentioned earlier, this is that thinner cardboard. Once it's all assembled though, it's rather sturdy. There's some wider parts to this plastic railing on the inside to help kind of strengthen the body of the train itself. Got a couple tab pieces on each side of the train uh, with some foot pegs on it so you could stick some range troopers on the side. And then on the top part of the train here, you have a couple other foot pegs also sticking through from that plastic railing to help hold figures up. As far as the printing of the train, it is a nice photo that's printed on there. I think it's pretty representative of what we saw in the movie anyways. You know, little bits of red in front with the metal grills through the uh, pilot area. But otherwise, just lots of panel detailing and, you know, wear and tear and scuff marks painted in on there. One tiny thing for me that is pretty minimal is just this front little part of the conveyance train just kind of keeps popping out just got to push that back in get it to snap back into place i think that's something that everyone's probably going to struggle with on this otherwise though you got some nice plastic parts showing through for the wheel itself the tread obviously the railing is plastic and then this post that helps support the railing and the train running to the base of the playset is all plastic there and on the other side where you've got Fort Lipso, I'm going to guess that that's the lodge painted in on the background where they had their card game and stuff. Otherwise, the rest of this place, it really looks like the area where they were breaking in to get back the Millennium Falcon and then, you know, head off and do their little mission. But you got some nice painting on this wall here of the side of the mountain cliffs, little light bulbs and stuff painted in there. As you can see, you got a painted stairway coming off the side of the cliff with some steps painted in there. So these aren't actual steps. You're not gonna stand figures on there or anything. This is more like just a ramp with fake steps. And then for the base where your figures would stand on, it looks like just some dirt, rock, maybe a little bit of snow painted in there. Off to the side, you do have a plastic sliding gate. Pretty nice detailing to it overall with some lights hanging off to the side. Not working, obviously. Uh, unfortunately, this is all just one single color of gray plastic. No special weathering. The gate does, of course, slide open, so you can, you know, play with your figures, have them walk through, whatever. Now, the opening of this doorway is a little bit short, so Chewbacca doesn't really look like he's going to fit through there all right, but, I mean, he is a tall Wookiee after all. Your other figures, though, they're going to slide through that doorway no problem. They fit just fine, if that's something you're interested in knowing. On each side of this gate, just off to the side of the door itself, you've got a little com panel sculpted in there. So, overall, this area, I think, is looking pretty decent, you know. It's a gate. But it's got some sculpting in there, so it's it's looking all right. And then finally, you do get these two additional little foot peg stands. They work fine, both with the range trooper and even the included Chewbacca figure. It's a nice little add-in. I don't know that you're necessarily going to need it since the majority of this playset is flat. Your figures are probably going to stand just fine already. But you never know, you run across one that doesn't stand up well on its own, and now you got something to help you out. And as far as the force link sounds of the playset... <laughs> Well, it sounds like it's just train engine noise running. Uh, I wish it was as constant as it was like when you hold the vehicles and stuff. This one just stops out as you heard. I gotta say, I don't know that you're gonna get much use of the sound included with this playset, especially with it being positioned at the top of the train like this. And now on to Chewbacca where this version of the figure is essentially the same as what you got on the single carded release. There is some variances in the gray. I'm throwing these two figures up side by side here so you can see that. You can see that this Vandor playset Chewbacca has a little more gray extending out from around the eyes than we did on the single carded release. Down at the legs, that gray of his fur kind of extends past the kneecaps, if you will. Whereas on the single carded release, that wasn't the case. And also the color of the plastic for the blasters that were included is just a little bit lighter in color on the Vandor playset than the single carded release. So there's some of the variations there. I don't know if this was an intentional change or maybe it's just kind of a, a paint variation that happens after making so many figures. For all I know, all the other single carded releases of Chewbacca could have these variances also. Now I have not done a review of that single carded release, so I guess I'll just include that here. The head sculpt of the figure looks really good. 
Android, and essentially it seems to be a scaled down version of the 6 inch black series. So he's got his hair parted and stuff, more like he did in Return of the Jedi, but then again, this figure with the, with the goggles, his hair was getting blown around on the train, so I guess it's probably only natural that they gave him that messy look here. Sculpting of the face, or rather I guess what you see of the eyes, the nose, the mouth area is looking pretty good. I think I mentioned this on the 6 inch version, but here also, a little bit squished in, not quite the Chewbacca face that I'm used to seeing. He's got a tiny mouth opening painted in there. You see his teeth, a little bit of pink for the tongue or something. Aside from that, painting and sculpting of the head area is looking good. And really, there's not a whole lot to say about the figure. It's just, it's a lot of fur. It looks good. It looks like I expect a Chewbacca figure to look like. So really, that's just going to cover it for the rest of the figure. On this case, you do have that double bandolier. The sculpting of that is quite representative of what we saw in the movie. Nice painting for those shotgun shells that he's got slid into a few of those holsters there. As you see on the back side of the figure, he does have those holsters sculpted in there, and for whatever reason, those other two canisters are not painted. I really wish they'd complete the look on this stuff on the back side of these figures. Why they always stop at the front, I don't know. But anyways... So this figure, sculpted out on the back, whereas the single carded release, uh, especially on the one that I have, didn't have that sculpted in. There was a running change they made on the single carded release, adding that sculpting onto the back of the bandolier. So yeah, overall, pretty good looking figure here. As for the goggles, nice sculpt to them. Simple paint job, but it's what it's needed. Little gray or silver coloring around the lenses of the goggles. And then that brown band. In this case, where the 6 inch figure had that elastic band, this is just a sculpted plastic piece of plastic running around the head, but it still slides on very nicely and fits well over the eyes. As far as the articulation of the figure, uh, well, because of the way the fur is sculpted down around the shoulders, you're getting pretty limited movement side to side, but you got some there. As far as the shoulder area, they both spin all the way around, so no problems really. Uh, you do snag on his little satchel pouch there, but you can still work right past that. And then the legs go straight out and then back just a little bit. As far as his included blaster, the sculpting of that again here is pretty accurate to what we saw in the movie. So things are looking pretty good. Lots of little scopes and stuff sculpted in there. A little bit of design on the handle end. And then for the barrel, you got his little pump action piece here. But in this case, it doesn't slide. The six inch version had that. This one doesn't. And here's a quick look at the other side of the rifle where things are mostly the same. You know, you don't have the same handle on the other side, which you shouldn't. It's only on the one side. Uh, but otherwise, like I said, nice looking weapon. Now, as far as getting it into his hand, same on the single carded release, he's got a super tight grip on his hand. So you really got to pry those hands open to get the rifle in there. But it can be done. You can eventually get that rifle to sit pretty nicely into his hand. And as far as the force link sounds for Chewbacca... And then, of course, when you slide it and tap it, you get some additional sounds. And so that's the Force Link sounds of Chewbacca. It sounds like it might be taken right from the movie, but it's kind of hard to tell. And in case you're wondering, these are the same sounds that you're getting with that single-carded Chewbacca release. Which makes sense, since this is the same figure. So overall, this really is a very nice looking playset. It's well built, it's very sturdy, it's going to hold together for you. You might be able to take it apart and reassemble a few times before things start to wear out though. I think ultimately where this is going to either fail or succeed is going to be dependent on the amount of figures that we get to support the environment. Right now, we just don't have a lot out there to do that. Some more speeder bikes from the Cloud Rider gang would be nice for the area. And I know we've got Val coming. I think we got a Beckett coming as well. But I feel like this just isn't going to have the value to people if the figures aren't there to support the piece. And so that wraps up this look at the Vandor One playset. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on it in the comments section below. And as always, thanks for watching.